At this station, you'll learn to compare fractions when the denominators are the same. Suppose you had to answer this question. Would you rather eat two-thirds of the Brussels sprouts on your plate or two-fifths of the Brussels sprouts? The answer might be different depending on whether you like Brussels sprouts or not, right? At your station, you have some fraction manipulatives, some colored pencils or markers, and a recording sheet called Comparing Fractions When the Denominators Are the Same. Be sure you can reach all of your materials. Use your fraction manipulatives to make two different holes that are the same size. One of them should be divided into three parts and the other should be divided into five parts. Pause the video while you make the holes and then start it again when you're finished. Your manipulatives should look like this. Look at part one of your sheet. See the circles at the top? Pause the video and do two things. Adjust your manipulatives if you need to so that they match mine, and then partition the circles on your sheet. One should be partitioned into three pieces and the other into five. Remember that partitioning means to divide the whole into equal size parts, so make your parts as equal size as you can. Use a pencil so you can erase if you need to, and then you can also adjust your models if you need to. So pause the video, adjust your manipulatives to match mine, and then partition the circles in part one. So one of the circles is divided into three pieces and the other is divided into five pieces. The holes are the same size, but the fractional parts are different sizes. Compare the sizes of the fractional parts. Which hole has larger parts? The hole that's been divided into three parts or the one that's been divided into five parts? In the picture, you can see that the thirds are larger than the fifths. Pause the video now and discuss why thirds are larger than fifths when the holes are the same size. And then write your thinking in part two on your sheet. You can start the video again when everyone at your table is finished. Check your paper and see if you wrote something like fifths. Fifths are smaller than thirds because the whole is divided into five parts and that means that the parts are smaller. Thirds are larger than fifths because the whole is divided into only three parts. That makes the parts larger. Now let's look at your fraction models again. Remove pieces from your holes so that you have two thirds and two fifths showing. And then go back to the circles that you partitioned in part one and shade them so that you have two fifths and two thirds shaded. Pause the video while you're doing these two things. Now, which is greater, two-fifths or two-thirds? How could you know that two-thirds is greater than two-fifths just by looking at the denominators? Pause the video and discuss this with your team. Why is two-thirds larger than two-fifths? How can you know just by looking at the denominators? Pause the video and discuss and then do part three. So in part three, you had to write some comparisons. There are two ways to write the comparisons. You can write two thirds is greater than two fifths, or you can write two fifths is less than two thirds. Now, 
you could also fill in these blanks a little in different ways. Um, on the screen, you can see two different ways to fill in the blanks. So I'm going to read them to you. Here's the first one. When the numerators are the same and the denominators are different, the fraction with the bigger denominator is less than the fraction with the smaller denominator. The other way to write it is when the numerators are the same and the denominators are different, the fraction with the smaller denominator is greater than the fraction with the bigger denominator. Now those words can be kind of confusing. So if it is confusing to you guys, stop the video and discuss it. That's perfectly fine. In order to know if you have it written correctly, you have to have all the words in the same order for each one. So in the top one, bigger, less, and smaller. And then the bottom, the bottom example, smaller, greater, and bigger. So how do you know when a fraction is greater or less than another one? Do you sometimes have trouble remembering which symbol to write? Here is a way to help you remember. Put two dots by the largest fraction and one dot by the smallest fraction. And then connect the dots to make an inequality. That'll help you remember how to write the symbol if you already know which fraction is larger than the other one. Now you're going to work part four with your group. See if you can use mental math to determine which fraction is larger. Once you've finished, you can raise your hands to get the answer key from your teacher. Pause the video and work with your team. Thanks for learning with us.